Hey, what's up guys, Coach Austin here, and today I wanna to talk about two things that we commonly see within our online coaching clients when utilizing the Barbell RDL. So the first thing is going to be emphasizing the lowering portion of the rep or the eccentric portion of that rep. Commonly clients blow past that, okay, by not controlling that portion of the rep. The second one is going to be keeping those abs engaged and staying within their active range of motion. Okay, so I'm gonna go over both of those really quick. Okay, so that first one, like I mentioned, is going to be blowing past or not placing enough emphasis on that deceleration and lowering portion of the rep. Okay, so commonly clients will get into a great position, everything's great in terms of setup. Now, what they'll do is they'll go down too fast, okay, blowing past that eccentric portion of that rep, okay? And you can see a problem start to arise, especially when this bar is loaded, okay? So one, slowly going into that rep allows us to not only place a high amount of tension, which is one massive advantage of this exercise on that posterior chain, the hamstrings and the glutes, but also when this bar, <coughs> this bar is heavily loaded, one thing that we <coughs> will run into, excuse me, is going to be a higher risk of injury, okay? So the faster we go here, the harder it is to decelerate at that bottom of the rep, okay? So the faster we go here, the more we have to compensate at the bottom to catch that bar and then transition back into that concentric part of the rep, okay? So we want to make sure our abs are engaged, we're in a good position, lower that bar, under control to that bottom range, okay? <clears throat> and as I keep mentioning that deceleration component, right, as we approach that bottom, if we are picking up some speed, right, so the lower we go, the higher amount of tension we are placing on those muscles, okay? The further this bar is getting away from my hips or the further my hips are getting away from the bar, okay? So the higher amount of tension is gonna be loaded here so we need to be sure that we pay attention to that deceleration component and that transition back into the concentric, which plays into the second point, which is staying within a good active range of motion for you, okay? Everyone has different hip mobility, okay? And when it comes to our ability to go down into the eccentric, okay, we want to focus on driving those hips back, 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 and once those hips stop, that's pretty much all we have in terms of range of motion. Okay, you're gonna notice if I pick this bar back up, one of the biggest problems here with blowing past that active range of motion is going to be <clears throat> all the tension that's placed on that low back. Okay, so you'll notice if I stop where I should, there's not much flexion or movement at that low back. Okay, some is not wrong but too much is. Okay, so as we're driving back, drive those hips back, okay, that's the end of my range of motion, and then I drive those hips forward back into the bar to the top. But if I blow past that, what's gonna happen is, if I blow past that just to reach a destination, the first thing I have to do is get back into the position I should have been in in the first place, and then drive my hips forward, and I can tell you right now, just with no weight on the bar, my low back is on fire, okay? Which probably speaks to some weakness in my low back that I need to address, but as a whole, that's not where we want to be with this movement, okay? So those first are those two things that we commonly see. Again, it's gonna be that not emphasizing the lowering portion or the eccentric portion of that rep, and that second one is going to be working outside of your active range of motion, sacrificing your low back health in the long term.